Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Brother Nathaniel, and to my right, Brother Barack Shaw. Today's topic will be Lucifer, the Lucifer of the Bible. Who is this Lucifer that we constantly hear about in the Christian church? But before we begin, let's open up to John chapter 8 and verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, if you want freedom, you want to go back to your native land, okay? You want dominion over the earth, if you want dominion. If you want salvation, Christ said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The time of the Christian lies is over. The era of Christianity is over. This is a new day, brothers and sisters. This is the time of the end. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Because that's where the famous Lucifer, where the churches teach you that, oh, God and Satan got into a fist fight. <laughs> God beat Satan up and kicked him out of heaven. All that, all those lies are at an end now. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and let's start at verse 1. <clears throat> Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. So now, we, let's pause right there. It said, and the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Jacob, who's Jacob? Remember, his name was changed to Israel. He is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read it again. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Why does it say, and will yet choose Israel? Hmm? Because who did Christ come for? He came and died for only the children of Israel. Hold on. Get uh, Acts chapter 5. I'm going to show you that right now. Because all you Christians that tell a lie that Christ came for all races, he came for the Philistines, he came for the Jebusites, the Edomites, the Moabites, you are a bunch of liars. Acts 5, let's start at verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So we ought to obey God rather than men. So we're going to see, brothers and sisters, because for years, centuries, we've been obeying the so-called white man and his Christian lies. But let's see what God says. Come on. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. See, it says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Because the religious leaders of our people, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they're the ones that handed Christ over to the Romans. Him have God exalted with his right hand. Him, which is Christ, hath God exalted with his right hand. To be a prince. To be a prince. And a savior. And a savior. Let's see who he's a prince and a savior to. For to give repentance. To give repentance to who? To Israel. To Israel. And what else? And forgiveness of sins. Did it say all nations? For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So I hope you all understand that. So now let's go back. So that's why it says it will yet choose Israel because the Most High already had it ordained that Christ was going to come and die for the nation of Israel. Read it again, Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So the Lord is going to set the Israelites in their own land, not the League of Nations, like what occurred in, when was that? 1948. 48, yeah. Okay, that ain't, that ain't what the Bible's talking about. It said the Lord going to send Israel, put the Israelites back in their own land. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So now some of you other uh, black men and black women talking about the law of the stranger. <laughs> what about the strange nations? Let's see what's going to happen with them. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave. To the house of Jacob. When it says they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, just like Ruth cleaved to Naomi, meaning she obeyed the laws, these strange nations are going to obey the laws. But they're not, let's see if they're going to do it willingly. Go ahead. Or sue. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and hens. You see that? It said in the house of Israel shall what? And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. We shall possess them. Possess sound like slavery. Mm -hmm. Now this is Isaiah prophesying about the kingdom of heaven. What? And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Do you hear what Isaiah said in the spirit? Oh, I know what you're saying. I know what some of you black men and black women are thinking right now. 
Not my Jesus. No, <laughs> no Jesus changed that. Ain't nobody going to be possessing nobody. See, what you fail to understand is that our God is a just God. What happened to us? You think God forgot about the 400 years of captivity and hard bondage just being over here? He ain't forget nothing. Go to Revelation 13. Let's see what Jesus said about the Israelites possessing the other nations. Let's see if he changed any of that. Revelation 13, start at verse 9. Revelation 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You have ears on the side of your head. You have understanding. Listen to this. He that leadeth into captivity go shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Read verse 10 again. He that leadeth into captivity. Stop. Who led the black man, black woman into captivity? Who led the Latin man, Latin woman into captivity? I'm going to pause. I'm going to give you a second. Think about it. Who led us into captivity? Read it again. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword. Wait, wait, read it. I missed it. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Did y'all hear that? He that leadeth into captivity shall, did it say might? Shall go into captivity. You hear what Christ said? You hear what the king of kings said? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword? Were we killed by the sword? Did the Africans and the Arabs and the white men kill us in order to bind us and bring us over here? Yes, they kill millions of us. Must be killed with the sword. Oh, must be killed. That's the pro that's what Christ prophesied about. Come on. Here is the patience. If, go ahead. And the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now you need to think about that. You call yourself a saint? If you call yourself a saint, then the only saints are Israelites. So the Israelites must patiently endure and wait for the true judgment of God to come upon the earth. Back to Isaiah 14 now. Isaiah 14, verse 2 again. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and hands. So Christ didn't come to change nothing. That's why in Matthew 5, he said, wait, let's get that in Matthew 5. I want y'all to understand that about that captivity stuff. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, verse 17. Matthew 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. You heard that? Christ said, don't even think about it. Don't get it twisted, brothers and sisters, that Christ came to change the law or the prophets. Come on. I am not come to destroy. He didn't come to change, destroy nothing Isaiah said or any of the prophets or the law. But to fulfill. Christ is going to ensure that everything this Bible that's written in this Bible is going to be fulfilled. Everything. I want you to understand that. Like what we just read in Isaiah 14. Let's go back there now. Isaiah 14, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Mm -hmm. And they shall rule over their oppressors. You hear that? And they shall rule over their oppressors. I don't know, let's go through that again. <laughs> and they shall rule over their oppressors. So black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, who is oppressing you? Who started this Arizona law? Tell the right. Mexicans you got to get the hell out of Arizona. <laughs> who is oppressing you? Huh? Read that bottom part again and they shall rule. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Go back to that and they shall take them captives. Uh, shh. Two. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. They shall take them captives whose captives they were. Whose captives are we? Huh? We are, we've been captive under the hand of America almost 400 years. It says, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. That bottom part now? And they shall rule over their oppressors. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Come on. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. Read it again. And it shall come to pass, in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest 
from thy sorrow. The Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow. Does that sound familiar? The Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow. Does it sound familiar yet? Let's go to Matthew 11. Let's see what Christ, because there's a famous thing that Christ said that many churches always quote. Matthew 11, we want verse 28 and 29. Right. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Oh, come unto me, all ye that labor. What is it talking about labor? Labor in what? Laboring in captivity, hard bondage, slavery. Read it again. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. What are we laden with? Sin. We're heavy laden with sin. That's why we as a people went into slavery, like we've gone over through Deuteronomy 28. The reason we went into slavery was what? Because we broke God's commandments, meaning we kept sinning. So we were made slaves, especially here in this day under America. Read it again. Come unto me, all ye that labor, labor in captivity and are heavy laden, laden with sin. And I will give you rest. See what Christ said, and I will give you rest. Was that verse 29? That was verse 28. Verse 28, go ahead. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Christ. And learn of me. You brothers and sisters, you must learn the Bible. You must be born again correctly. You must learn the Bible the way we are teaching you the Bible, in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Let's go back to Isaiah 14 and verse 3 again. Now we have a better understanding of this. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. He's going to give us rest from our sorrow. Go ahead. And from thy fear. And from our fear. Go ahead. And from the hard bondage. And from the hard bondage. This is what Christ was talking about. Wherein thou was made to serve. We were made to serve here in the United States of America. North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean Islands. Okay? Was that it? That's it. Verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now, what I want you to notice, because you might ask yourself, well... Who is this king of Babylon? Mm -hmm. This king of Babylon is the oppressors in verse 3. Read the bottom of verse 3. It says, uh, and from the hard bondage. Verse, verse 2, bottom of 2. I mean. 2, yeah. Uh, I'll start from, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Verse 4 now. Verse 4. And thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So God, through, this, through Isaiah, calls our, our oppressors the king of Babylon. I want you to see the different adjectives, the different names that God calls this nation of people. He goes from calling them the oppressors to calling them the king of Babylon, the king of confusion. Read verse 4 again. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon mm -hmm. and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? See that? Verse 4 is letting you know the king of Babylon is the oppressor. I'm going to say it again. The king of Babylon is the oppressor spoken of at the bottom of verse 2. Read it again. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Now, let's pause right there. Let's get some understanding about Babylon. What? Because ancient Babylon, what race of people ruled ancient Babylon? It was the Ethiopians, okay? That was ancient Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, those were ancient, those were the Ethiopians. But who is Isaiah talking about? Go to Psalms 137. Mm -hmm. I now need you, brothers and sisters. I'm being patient with you. You be patient with us. Take out your notebooks, your pens and paper. Record these shows. Psalms 137, we want verse 7 mm -hmm. and 8. Now, I'm going to give you a, a quick synopsis. David in the spirit sees the fall of Jerusalem. He sees what nations help ancient Babylon. So I want you to see what he calls the nation that helps ancient Babylon. Psalms 137 verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. The children of who? The children of Edom. We've gone over in several episodes that Edom is who? The so-called white man. That's their biblical name, Edom. They are the descendants of Esau. Read it again. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. That was verse 8? That's verse, that's verse 7. Go ahead. Verse 8. O daughter of Babylon. You see what they call uh, Edom now? Read from 7 again. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. The children of Edom, they helped ancient Babylon. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, Meaning, raise it. Destroy it, destroy it. Even to the foundation thereof. O oh, daughter of Babylon, 
who ought to be destroyed. See what David's calling Edom in verse 8? The daughter of Babylon. Because Edom followed all the principles, all the characteristics of ancient Babylon. Now, from there, let's go back now. Go to uh, Revelation 17. Because we read about Babylon in the New Testament also. Okay, Babylon the Great. We want Revelation 17. Read verse 4 and 5. Revelation 17, verse 4. Now listen good. Remember in Isaiah, it said Babylon was the golden city. So watch this, what the Apostle John says. Revelation 17, we, all we want is verse 4 and verse 5. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. She had a golden cup in her hand. Full of abominations. Full of abominations. And filthiness of her fornication. Mm. And upon her forehead was a name written. Listen to what this woman represented. Mystery. Babylon the Great. You see what this woman with the golden cup represented? Mystery. Babylon the Great. Why is it a mystery? Because this woman with the golden cup represents a nation of people. And it says mystery because although you're being told that this woman represents America, many of you right now can't believe it. No! You think Saddam Hussein was talking was Babylon. You fools. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That was five? That's five. Now, jump down to the last verse, verse 18, to see what John said about this woman. Watch Revela this. They'll Revela let you know it's America. Revelation 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is, the, is that great city. The woman which thou sawest is that great city. Meaning that great nation, that great country which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So this great city, which is a nation of people, reigns, rules over the kings of the earth. Hold on, let's think about that a second. Is that talking about Saddam? Where's Saddam Hussein I'm from? Is that I Iraq? That's, that's Iraq, yeah. Iraq. That's, are they ruling over the kings of the earth? Maybe it's uh, China. Is China ruling over the kings of the earth? Maybe it's... The Ethiopians. <laughs> Are the Ethiopians ruling over the kings of the earth? No! But is America ruling everybody? Yes! 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 Read it again. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now let's go back to Isaiah 14. Okay, verse 4 again. Isaiah 14, verse 4. Mm -hmm. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So the king of Babylon is the daughter of Babylon, is Babylon the great in Revelation. Go ahead. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? Let's get some more. How has the oppressor ceased? See, you know what a lot of you tend to do? You like to uh, ignore the Old Testament so you can get a dumb pork chop preacher <laughs> who don't know nothing, who know you dumb as hell, and, and use certain passages to manipulate your mind. But you need to read the entire Bible, precept upon precept. Read that again. I'm going to show you something. That thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now, we went to precepts to explain Babylon, but watch this. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? Who's oppressing us? We went over that earlier. Watch this. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 28. See, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, is a pivotal point of the Bible. It tells you black men and black women, Latin men and Latin women, who you are. We want Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. Read verse 29. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. We're going here to find out about the oppressor. And thou shalt grope at noonday. So the Israelites, this is one of the curses that came upon the Israelites. As the blind grope up in dark. Meaning you're looking for the truth, but you can never find it. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Our people never prosper in their ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. You hear the prophecy? Now, verse 33. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land. The fruit of thy land. And all thy labors. And all thy labors. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. When the Spaniards came to this side of the world, they ate up the fruit of the labors of the Latin Americans, which are the ten, ten tribes of Israel. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt only be oppressed and crushed always. Always. You hear the prophecy? You see the correlation now? Let's go back to Isaiah 14 now. In verse 4 again. Isaiah 14, verse 4. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So who's the king of Babylon? Psalms 137 said, 
in verse verse seven and eight said, "Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom." O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Revelation 17 said, And the woman which thou sawest, which, which has the golden cup in her hand, is mystery, Babylon the great, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. You see that? Read it again. That, and that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? Who's the oppressor? The same oppressor that who has dominated us and put us in hard bondage. Right? The golden city ceased. The, what is the golden city? Is China the golden city? <laughs> is Iraq the golden city? No! America is the golden city. With, they, they got, t people think that the streets are paved with gold here, like over in Jamaica. They all want to come over here. Oh yeah, America got money. They think money grows on trees in this place over here. This is the, 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 the place where things come at a cheap price, okay? This is the place that's the golden city where all nations want to come here and be like. Go ahead. Verse 5. The Lord have broken the staff of the wicked. See the prophecy that Isaiah says? Isaiah sees in the spirit the king of Babylon going down. He sees America falling down. He said, the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. Notice it's calling uh, the oppressor, the king of Babylon, the wicked. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, meaning their rulership. Go ahead. And the scepter of the rulers. Go ahead. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. With a continual stroke. Go ahead. He that ruled the nations in anger. He who ruled the nations in anger. Go ahead. Is persecuted. Uh-oh. You hear what the prophecy says? It says is persecuted. What is that talking about? Isaiah is letting us all know that in the spirit. There's going to come a time when the greatest city on earth, the greatest country on earth, America, Babylon the Great, shall be persecuted. And brothers and sisters, you're living in that time now. What is this persecution talking about? Terrorist activity. Bombs going off everywhere. That is coming to pass. You thought, uh, what's that? The World, uh, world Trade Center. You thought the World Trade Center was a coincidence? Oh, brothers and sisters, don't sleep. This is the time of persecution, okay? All the nations are here. Go ahead. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. And you can't stop it. None hindereth. Let me get some more now. I want you to hold that. Right. Go to Habakkuk 2. Let's get some more about the persecution that's coming to this place, the United States of America. Okay, they thought this place was the land of milk and honey. Right. A lot of you Negroes thought this was the promised land. No. This is the land of your captivity. This is the land where you're meant to repent here to be delivered from here. Okay? Habakkuk 2, let's start at verse 5. Habakkuk 2, verse 5. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. Now, Habakkuk is talking about Babylon also. But this Babylon, just like the Babylon David spoke about, just like the Babylon Isaiah spoke about, just like the Babylon John the Apostle spoke about, is America, the United States of America called Babylon the Great. Read it again. Back. Yea, also because he transgresses by wine. Yea, because he transgresses by wine. This wine that America transgresses with is their philosophy, their religious lies, and their political lies. That's the wine it's talking about. Go ahead. He is a proud man. It's letting you know that this man is a proud man. Come on. Neither keep it at home. Does America stay home? Do they only mind their own business or are they in everybody's land? America's everywhere in everybody's land, trying to get the oil from here, trying to get the resources from there. Come on. Who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death. Who enlarges his desire is as hell, and is as death. Where, wherever America goes, that land, that country, turns to hell, so to speak. Meaning the people get poisoned in their mind, their customs get changed, like in Kuwait. Right. They celebrated Christmas over there. Now they got porno shops over there. Okay? Democracy. Right. Democracy is there. Go ahead. And is as deaf and cannot be satisfied. This man cannot be satisfied. Read. But gathereth unto him all nations. This is letting you know it's talking about America. Read that again. And But gathereth unto him all nations. What do they call America? The great melting pot. Here in America, you have all nations here. Read it again. But gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. He got all people over here. Come on. Shall not all these take up a parable against them? Listen to what the parable that these people, all these nations that are already here, are going to say. And a taunting proverb against them, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that 
which is not his. Woe unto him that increases that which is not his. Now let's uh, let's think about that. Was this land, the North, Central, South America, was this given to the white man? Or were the people already here? Huh? When they came over here, starting with Spain, what is, was this place empty mm -hmm. or were there people living here? Those people you call Indians that were here, those were the ten tribes. Those are the ten tribes of Israel. Let's read that part again. Woe unto him. Woe to him that increase of debt, which is not his. Right. He increased that which is not his. He steals lands. Okay. Even the moon. It's going to go into that. Go ahead. How long? And to him that laideth himself with thick clay. Right. Laideth himself with thick clays. He got all his people around him filled with their lies. Go ahead. Shall they not rise up suddenly? Watch what these nations are going to do. Shall they not rise up suddenly? That shall bite thee. You see what all the people and nations that are already here going to do? Do you see? Can you understand the prophecy? Read that part again. Shall they not rise up suddenly? That shall bite thee. That shall what? That shall bite thee. That's talking about terrorist activity will occur here and it's going to continue you cannot stop it brothers sisters you cannot stop it you are living in the midst of bible prophecy our job is to make you understand that to make you see what day and time you're living in right. was that it and awake that shall vex thee then in these nations these people out of here it says they shall what and awake that shall vex thee awake and they shall vex these people here and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Meaning spoils. They're going to take what's, what they want. Was that all I went down to verse 8? Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Now God is going to explain why all these nations are going to rise up that's already here. Because of what? Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Because America has spoiled many nations with their CIA, their FBI. They have spoiled many nations. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. You hear what God says in the spirit? God is letting you know. That all these people you got here in this country, a lot of them going to rise up and bite you. A lot of them going to rise up and vex you. Talking about how? In their economy, okay? And all these terrorist things is going to start to occur. Was that it? Because of men's blood. Because of what? Because of men's blood. Because the nations and countries that America is bombing, that they're taking down through warfare, a lot of those nations are here. The remnants of those people are living here. Go ahead. And for the violence of the land. And for the violence of the land. That's verse 8. Of the city and of all that dwell therein. Now let's go back to Isaiah chapter 14. And we want to go back to verse 6 again. He who smote the people in wrath. America smote the people in wrath. With a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger. He that ruled the nations in anger because all the nations are here. Many of the nations here like you got Japanese here. Right. Don't you remember they dropped the atom bomb in 1945 on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Huh? You got many Arabs here. They bombed the hell out of Afghanistan, Kuwait, mm -hmm. many of these Arab nations. A lot of them Arabs are here. Go ahead. Is persecuted. So it says this man here shall be persecuted. And none hindereth. Nobody can stop it, brothers and sisters. With all your marching, <laughs> your voting, the Bible says you cannot stop it. Was that it? The whole earth is at rest. God says now when this man goes down, the prophecy is that the whole earth will be at rest. Go ahead. And it's quiet. And the whole earth will be quiet. So you want peace on earth. God's letting you know the prophecy. In order for there to be peace, these, this place is going to go down. Now I know a lot of you might be scared right now. I know a lot of you, you tremble, you itching in your seat, you're nervous, but this is the prophecy. I have to give it to you straight. I can't water it down for you. Come on. They break forth into singing. I said, you want that one? No, keep going. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. So when this man, when America goes down, the prophecy says the fir tree is going to rejoice when this man go down. Go ahead. And the cedars of Lebanon saying. And the trees of Lebanon shall rejoice and say what? Since thou art laid down. Since America has been laid down. No fellas come up against us. A fella is an axe cutter. It says no fella has come up against us. What happens every so-called Christmas? You know that lying Christian holiday you celebrate mm -hmm. that God says don't celebrate in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 4? What happens? They cut down tree after tree after tree. That's how you get your paper. Many of your products, what they call it? Echo. Right. No, no. Right. Be green. Be, be green. Let's go be green. green. Let's, Let's go, go green. green. <laughs> and they're cutting down a lot of stuff. The prophecy says when this man goes down, the tree is going to rejoice. The tree is going to be going, thank you, Lord. This man is going down. We at rest. Go ahead. Verse 9. 
Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Who is the hell from beneath? That's going to meet them. Remember we read in Isaiah, uh, mm. Habakkuk chapter 2 right. that they enlarge their desire as hell cannot be satisfied. Heaps unto them all peoples and nations. So the nations that are in hell is going to rise up to meet this man as they're coming down in their economy, coming down in their power. These nations that have been laying around are going to rise up against the United States of America. They to hell. Go ahead. It stirreth up the dead for thee. It stirreth up the dead for thee. It's going to explain who the hell and the dead is. Even all the chief ones of the earth. You see that? Read that part again. Even all the chief ones of the they earth. They're going to rise up against this, man. That's the prophecy. And you Negroes can't change nothing. You better get with God's program. You better repent of your sins, all right? Get into this Bible. Learn your nationality that you're the Israelites. Learn your tribes, okay? Repent and wait for the second coming of the Lord because this place is prophesied to go down. Go ahead. If it raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. All the kings of the nations going to come up against this place. Go ahead. All they shall speak and say unto thee. Listen good. Art thou also become weak as weak? Because as this man's going down and need some of these nations getting uranium, trying to get the bomb, they looking at America saying, are you becoming as weak as us? Go ahead. Are, the, are thou become like unto us? You coming down like us? You getting on our level now? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Pomp means pride. So the prophecy says your pride shall be brought down to the grave. Go ahead. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under them. What is the noise of their vials that God is going to smash? The noise of their vials is their music system, their church system. I'm going to show you that. Vials, V-I-O-L-S. Let's go to Amos 5, verse 23 to explain. Because a lot of you black men and black women, you in your church is singing your fake gospel songs. God tells you about your gospel songs that you sing it. Amos 5, verse 23. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. You hear what God says to you black men and black women? Read that again. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. So you and your church, you, they're having contest. a contest. Mm -hmm. We're going to see which uh, <laughs> church sings better than the next church. Mm -hmm. You Negroes are crazy. You're not dealing in the spirit of the Lord. You're working and operating in the spirit of the devil. you operating in the spirit of Antichrist. you operate operating in the spirit of America, Babylon the Great. Read it again. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. God calls your gospel songs noise. He can't stand it. He's saying, take thou away from me the noise of your songs. Come on. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. God says he don't want to hear the melody of your vials because those gospel songs you're singing is garbage. Let me say it again in case I studied. The God don't want to hear your gospel songs. Your gospel songs is garbage. Because you're not singing nothing the Bible's speaking about, about the resurrection of the nation of Israel, ruling in Christ over the earth. You ain't singing that. You singing about all nations coming together under America. You singing about democracy. You singing about every, we all black boys and white boys <laughs> holding hands and getting together. God is all love. God is all love. He don't feel nothing about other nations. Now from there, we're still dealing with the noise of their vials. Get me, um... Psalm 78, verse 14. I'm sorry, not Psalms. Get me Revelation 18, okay. verse 21 and 22, about their music industry. Revelation 18. Because the music industry in America is big business. Right. Listen what God prophesied. Revelation 18, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. Hear the prophecy, thus with violence. Shall that great city Babylon be thrown down? I'm going to say it again. Because you might think Christ coming back for peace and it's going to be all love. Read it again. And, it, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it unto the sea. Let's see what that symbolized. Saying, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. You see that how that goes exactly with what Isaiah 14 is saying? It's going into what exactly Habakkuk 2 is saying. See, the Bible ain't of no private interpretation. Right. That's why we go from precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. We have the proper understanding. Okay? Read. And shall be found no more 
at all. Come on. And the voice of harpers. And the voice of harpers. And musicians. And musicians. And of pipers. And of pipers. And of trumpeters. And trumpeters. This is your music industry. Shall be heard no more at all in thee. Shall what? Shall be heard no more at all in thee. So your music industry that's here, your gospel, your R&B, your rap, your hip hop is going down. Listen good to the prophecy. Let's go back to Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah 14 and verse, what verse were you when you was in 11? Verse 11. Read it verse 11 again. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. So the pride of America, the pride of Edom is being brought down to the grave. Come on. And the noise of thy vials. And the, and the noise of your vials shall be brought down to the grave. Your gospel, your Christian garbage, your, your, your music industry shall be brought down to the grave. The worm is spread under thee. The, word is, the worm is spread under you means what? When worms... Uh, Read it again. The worm is spread under thee. When worms are spread under you means corrosion. Your economy, your economy is being corroded. And you're seeing it now. Right. The government, we got to bail this one out. We got to bail that bank out. It's being corroded. You're seeing all the inconsistencies. You're seeing all of the, all of the wickedness that's happening on Wall Street. The big bankers. Go ahead. The worm is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. And the worms cover you. The economy is being covered in corrosion. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Wait, 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 wait a minute. So now I want we're gonna back up again. Back up to the bottom of bottom of verse two. I want I want you to see what the Bible said. Bottom of verse two. Bottom of verse two. Mm -hmm. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So the oppressor. Now verse four. Verse four. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So the oppressor is called the king of Babylon. Now verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now it's calling the oppressor Babylon Lucifer. I'm going to say it again. It went from calling them the oppressor, calling them the king of Babylon. Now it's calling them Lucifer. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer. Now, this is where the dumb, pork chop eating preacher who loves the white man goes, see there? <laughs> God got into a fight because the devil started a rebellion. They got into a fist fight. And God beat Satan up and kicked him out of heaven. Dad ain't talking about that. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven, oh, Lucifer? Let me give you a precept to help you in your understanding. I'm going to give you a precept with the Israelites. Lamentations 2, two one, verse 1. I'm going to give you a precept to explain being cast from heaven. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. Listen good. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion? The daughter of Zion are the Israelites. With a cloud in his anger. He was angry with us. And cast down from heaven unto the earth. He cast the Israelites what? And cast down from heaven unto the earth. The Israelites were cast down from heaven unto the earth. Read that again. And cast down from heaven unto the earth. So let's pause there and let's meditate on that a second. Were the Israelites flying around in heaven? <laughs> Were they had wings flying around? No, moron. No! What does it mean when it said the Israelites were cast down from heaven to the earth? They went from ruling. When we came out of Egypt, we were the top nation. And we fell and went into slavery. So read it again. And cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel. You hear that? Was that it? And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. Read the whole verse again. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. So the Israelites sin, God cast us from heaven meaning rulership and authority and made us slaves. That's what it means cast us to earth. Now let's go back to Isaiah. No, no, you know what? I, got, I need some more precepts for you. Because there's a dumb thought that uh, Lucifer was an angel. <laughs> and God gets mad at the devil. Give me Job 1 and 6. I, I got to go there. Have none of you ever read the book of Job? Let's see if God is at odds with Satan. Right. Or is Satan under, uh, under God's authority. Let's see. Job, book of Job chapter 1. We went 6 through 9. Right. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves, the angels, before the Lord. And Satan came also Satan, among them. Satan what? And Satan came also among no, them. No, 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 no. Satan got kicked out from heaven, brother. Satan got in a fight. <laughs> God banned him from heaven. No! What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. The Bible is revealing that your minister has been lying to you for years. The white man has been lying to you for centuries. Read. 
And the Lord said unto Satan. Lord said to who? And the Lord said unto Satan. Okay. Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Mm. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm. Has thou considered my servant Job? Now they're having conversation. Have you considered my conversation? My servant Job. My servant Job? You considered my servant Job? They talking. That there is none like him in the earth, mm. a perfect and an upright man, mm. one that feareth God mm. and escheweth evil. So God and Satan are having mm. a conversation. I just went down to nine. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou... That's what you want nine, right? I want that's that's nine. Now, let's get another one. We ain't done yet. Showing you that Satan is under God's control. Psalm 78, mm -hmm. verse 49. When we came out, when God sent the plagues upon Egypt. Let's see what Moses, what David said in the spirit about that. Psalm 78, verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. God cast upon the Egyptians the fierceness of his anger. Wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. God sent what? By sending evil angels among them. Do you see this? Your minister is a liar. Your, I'm going to say it again. Your minister is a liar and does not know the Bible. Now let's go back to Isaiah. All you right. got something? I have something for you. Right. Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. God does what? I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You have not learned the Bible yet. You have not learned the attributes and qualities of the one true God. But before Babylon is destroyed, brothers and sisters, you're going to learn this Bible. You're going to repent of your sins as the Israelites, and you're going to return to your tribes, okay? Because we are leaving. Time of our captivity is almost up. Back to Isaiah 14 and verse 12 again. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So now we understand what that means. That Lucifer is not the spiritual demon Satan, who's under God's control, under God's authority. This Lucifer, which means light bearer, is America, is Babylon the Great, is the oppressor, is the golden city. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So what is it saying? It's saying that time of America's rulership is up. Their time of going down is now. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Son of the morning. Now, when you look at the Statue of Liberty, when you ever examine that, what do you notice she's holding up in her? Mm -hmm. Is that her right hand? Her right hand, yeah. She has a torch. What does that torch represent? That she's a light bearer to the nations. She reveals the truth. She's the guiding light to all nations. That's what that represents. That's what Lucifer is talking about. Read it again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So Lucifer means light bearer. Son of the morning. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? How art thou cut down to the ground, meaning cast down to the earth. Just like the Israelites were cast down to the earth, now it's time for Babylon to be cast down to the earth. Which then is weaken the nations. It says Lucifer weakened the nations. Hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to explain. Go ahead. For thou said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't we just read in Job that the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord and Satan was amongst them? So he doesn't have to say that. Read that again. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Satan don't got to say that in his heart. He go <laughs> back and forth when he pleases. So who's saying I will ascend into heaven? Who is saying this? <laughs> this oppressor. This king of Babylon, this golden city, this Lucifer that's being cut down to the ground. They said, so what? Saying, I will ascend into heaven. Mm -mm. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Let's read that whole verse again. <laughs> we got to go through that. So I'm getting a headache right now. <laughs> but thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I want you to pause right there. Let's go to Obadiah 4. I'm going to give you a precept. Remember earlier, when we went to explain about Babylon, we went to Psalms 137 that said, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, O daughter of Babylon. Remember that. Now, Obadiah, read verse 1, then jump to verse 4. Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. 
Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Remember, Edom is so-called white man. All so-called white people come out of Edomites. Their headquarters, their top nation is the United States of America. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What's the symbol of America? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Go ahead. And though thou set thy nest right. among the stars. When they landed on the moon in 1969, they said what? The eagle has landed. Tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. So who's doing space travel? America, the nation of Edom. Let's go back to Isaiah 14 now. And what verse was that? Isaiah 14, and we're now in verse 13. 13 again. Come on. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So who's going into heaven exalting their throne above the stars of God, meaning space travel? Who's doing space travel? Is it the ancient Ethiopians? No. Is Satan Satan's up there when he wants to be up there? This is talking about when it says, I will. Read that again. Isaiah 14, verse 13. Come on. But thou hast said in thine heart, I will. I will. Meaning future tense. That has come to pass when? 1969. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. They landed on the moon in 1969. And from then, they have been going to space every month, every year. Come on. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. What is the mount of the congregation? That's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Where are we at? North America. Where is the white man sitting on top? When it says that I will sit upon them in the sides of the north, meaning I will oppress them, I will crush them always. Where? In the sides of the north, meaning North America. Read it again. Isaiah 14, verse 13. Mm -hmm. But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. North America. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Now it says what? I will ascend mm -hmm. above the heights of the clouds. 1903. You ever hear about the Wright brothers? They started uh, playing. Right. Plane flight. travel, right, flight. Flights with planes above the heights of the clouds. Let me say that again in case I started stuttering there. In 1903, you had the Wright brothers, famous guys, two white guys, Edomites. They created the first plane, and they flew above the heights of the clouds. Now they went from that, they went to jets, a Boeing 747. Right. Read it again. I will say, ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will ascend above. See, the Bible's real, brothers and sisters. See, you've been in your church cooning, shucking and jiving, jet dancing a jig. Mm -hmm. And you have thought the Bible, you have treated the Bible like a fairy tale book all your life. Yes, black woman, you and yours, I speak in tongues. <laughs> no, you're not speaking them. You're speaking garbage. You're speaking demon activity, okay? Because the Bible's a true book, okay? We're reading the prophecies about America doing space travel. We're reading the prophecies about America uh, creating uh, planes and flying above the heights of the clouds. We're reading prophecy about the Israelites going, being oppressed by Babylon, which is America. And you thought this Bible was fairy tale. You raised your children up to think the Bible is fairy tale. But that time is up, black mama. Brother, the time is up. The time is now for you and I to repent of our sins and prepare ourselves for the second coming of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So read it again. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I will what? I will be like. The most high. That's why every time you go to church, what kind of painting you see? You see images of the white man as God and Christ. They said, I will be like the most high. And if you don't believe me, I'm doing space travel. <laughs> so that's why a lot of, of, of the nations, a lot of the blacks and Latinos, a lot of you believe God is white. Because behind those false images, you see the science of this man. Right. You see them flying, the airplanes, you see space travel. You say, surely this man is God. Read that whole verse again. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Come on. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Do you hear the prophecy? Despite all that, 
Despite all the power, you destroying nations, you kept putting the Israelites in captivity, you flying above the heights of the clouds, you doing space travel, despite all that power you got, God says what? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Meaning captivity. Go ahead. To the sides of the pit. They are coming down, brothers and sisters. This is the prophecy. Come on. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man? What, 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 what? Is this what? Is this the man? No, 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 no. Lucifer, my brother. <laughs> See, here the pork chop eating preacher who been cooning all his life. No, my brother, because Lucifer, he's a spiritual demon. He's out there in the atmosphere. He's there. Read that again. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? What? Is this the man? What? Is this the man? Lucifer is man upon earth. Lucifer is the king of Babylon. Lucifer is a man, brothers and sisters. Lucifer is an oppressor. Lucifer is a man, thus saith the Lord. Read it again. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Who's destroying the earth, brothers and sisters? Who's this? Who's doing this? The Bible says it's a man upon the earth. We read in Obadiah, that man's name is Edom. I want you to understand it. Read it again. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Mm. That did shake kingdoms? Who's shaking kingdoms with war? Huh? Is this some spirit? No. It's the United States of America called Babylon the Great, called the oppressor, called the golden city, called Edom. Read it again. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness? That made the world as a wilderness. Come on. And destroyed the cities thereof? And destroyed the cities thereof with war, with po political wars, with economic wars. You've seen it on the news, CNN, Channel 7, Channel 2, Channel 12. You've seen it. It's time for you to wake up and accept the truth of this Bible. Come out of those false churches you're in. All those lying churches. It's time to wake up and repent. Come on. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. That opened not the house of his prison. That what? That opened not the house of his prison. What does that mean? That opened not the house of his prisons. Who are his prisoners? Read back to verse 1, because maybe they forgot the thought. Who are the prisoners he didn't open his house to? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel right. and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And you hear what it said about the Israelites? They shall take them captives whose captives they were. Go ahead. And they shall rule over they're oppressed. So the Israelites are being oppressed here. Back down now to where you was at, verse 17 again. That made the world as a wilderness Go and destroyed the cities thereof mm -hmm. that opened not the house of his prisoners. That opened not the house of his prisoners. Who's his prisoners now? The Israelites. So who are you, black man, black woman, Latin man, Latin woman, that were made captive slaves here? You are the Israelites. You're the one he's not opening the... Read that bottom part again. That opened not the house of his prison. He ain't letting you go. And when it says who opened not the house of his prison, he ain't going to tell you who you are and you niggas ain't going nowhere. <laughs> That's what it means. Read that bottom part again. That opened not the house of his prison. Because as high as some of you black men and women get in this system, you can only go but so far. You got certain rappers, right. certain people, we can go, we, we accept it now, my brother. We, no, you ain't accepted. You can only go but so far. And the, the doors are closed to you in certain meetings. Remember, you can log on to our website, www.israelunite.org to learn more. You can also visit us on YouTube where we have many videos up, www.youtube slash Nathaniel7, okay? So do yourself a favor. I want you all to write us. If you got questions, you can email us, all right? But back to Daniel 12 and verse 4, please. Daniel 12, verse 4. Okay. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge 
shall be increased. Read it again. Now, Daniel 12 is going to let us know further what time period we're living in. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. So for years, for centuries, the understanding of the Bible has been sealed, like it says in Isaiah 29. Get that real quick, Isaiah 29. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get through that kind of quick. I know time is of the essence. Isaiah 29, uh, look for the verse which says, read this, I pray thee. Right. Uh, Isaiah 29, verse 11. Okay. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Now, is that the, the verse above it talks about the unlearned one, right? right? I want the verse above it. Verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. The, right, the spirit of deep sleep is poured out upon you so-called Negroes that follow the white man's religions. Go ahead. And have closed your eyes. He's closed the eyes of the Negro preachers. Go ahead. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. Go ahead. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Because everything you see in this world is written in this Bible, but it's sealed to your ministers. Go ahead. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying. Which men deliver to one that is learned, meaning he goes to a seminary school. Right. Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is seen. Because those quote-unquote learned ministers, they can't open the Bible and explain why the black man and black woman went into slavery. They can't do it. And that's right. why they tell you the book of Revelation is sealed. Exactly. All right. Verse, thir verse 12, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Who's not learned? The Negro preacher that follows the fo understanding of the white man. He just busy cooning. <laughs> he cooning. He got watermelon eating. <laughs> he just mimic what he see the white man do. Read that part again. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Because he ain't learned in the Bible. He don't have the spirit of God. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. And he ain't going to literally say that, but you're going to understand he's not learned. Because when you ask him this question, why did the black man and black woman, why did God allow us to go into slavery? You know what he's going to say? Well, God moves in <laughs> mysterious ways. Uh, nobody knows the mind of the Lord. Negro, shut up. That means you don't know. Right. That's it. Back to Daniel uh, 12 and 4. We almost Daniel done. 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words sealed book. So for many years, the Bible understanding has been sealed until now. Go ahead. Even to the time of the end. Proving this is the time of the end. Now we realize who we are. We know why we went into slavery now. That shows and proves the spirit of God is upon the earth. Come on. Many shall run to and fro. Many shall run to and fro. And these false religions out there. And knowledge shall be increased. Now when it says knowledge shall be increased, I'll let you know. This is talking about the last days now. You see things created. When I was young, there was no cell phones. Right. There was no microwaves. Mm -hmm. These things going on. Okay, but now you see, uh, what's the word in that economy? Uh, technology right. on the rise. You got computers. Right? Thank you. You got computers. You got Microsoft, all that. Right. You got phone, Blackberries. Oh, this exactly. is unheard of. The Bible says knowledge shall be increased. Was that it? That's it on that. Okay. Brothers, sisters, I need you. Please, don't take my the passion as I'm bringing out the scriptures. Don't think it's hatred. It's not at all. It's love for you. That's why we bring up the word of God with such zeal and authority because we love our people. We need the most high loves you. That's why he's waking us up to deliver this truth to you. That's why he sent his son, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, to die for the 12 tribes of Israel. So brothers and sisters, we need your help in promoting this truth, keeping this truth going. You brothers and sisters that believe in your various states, we're here for you. Just call us. If you need our help to establish things, come together and ask, and you will have questions for us, we'll come. We will come. We're here for you. So with that, brothers and sisters, we give all praises to the Most High, and we say shalom. Shalom.